have removal, we have discard, which is irrelevant. <laughs> <laughs> what happened to all your land, Mr. Rogue? And even What's up, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, ghouls, and goblins? Welcome back. Thank you so much for taking the time out of your day to watch Hello Good Game. You hear that? Oh, that's good. High quality equipment, HGG. <laughs> it's that organic squeak that you guys show up every single day for. Reminder that if this live video reaches 100 likes before the premiere's over, we'll give out a $10 gift card. So like that video, comment below anything you want. Doesn't have to be any in particular number, whatever. Just leave, you know, some generic reply. And if we do get to that 100 likes, Y'all gonna win $10, or someone is, I should say, of those 100 people, which is pretty cool. With that being said, you know, we're charging toward 20,000 subs. Oh my gosh, our Starlink is on its way here. That's gonna upgrade the whole process. Thank you guys so much for all of your support recently. It's been truly amazing. Whether you're brand new to the channel, or you've been a residing Wolfgang member for a while, cheers. Okay, so today we're playing Mono Black Aggro Demonic Berserkers revolving around the new creature tribal Berserker. We also have, you know, some elves thrown into the fray here as well. It's kind of like a combo of the two, which is really nice. It's a very aggressive deck. It has a very high win rate and the match time is very low. We're talking about two minutes a match here, which is awesome. Very nice. Breaking down the deck list, talking about, you know, our process throughout the build, how we started it and branched out from there, uh, balanced everything, why things were chosen to be included, you know, the whole shebang. And of course, then breaking down strategies, synergies, so you can play the deck effectively and efficiently. And then moving into the gameplay footage, breaking down our play lines and interactions, so you can see how it fares for yourself firsthand before you decide to spend the wild cards on it or not. Finally, our wrap-up thoughts, general shenanigans, and deck ideas. Just having fun with the video and uh, engaging with the community a little bit more. So, thank you guys all again for your time and attention. Your absolute stars yourself. Let's break down this mono black aggro deck. So, I think we're playing with about a 75% win rate in Mythic, which is pretty cool. Kind of slugging up uh, those percentages. We're playing a lot of jank recently, so we're trying to, as the end of the month nears, take it a little bit more seriously and do our best to obviously crack the top 1200. Maybe, if it's not too much effort. Uh, again, just trying my best while still making engaging content every day for you guys. Mono Black Aggro is an average converted mana cost of 2.2. 29 creatures, 10 non-creatures, 21 lands, right? So a fairly aggressive deck. It's not, you know, one of my most aggressive decks. I think we've had average converted mana costs as low as 1.6. So this is at 2.2, a little bit slower, but still plenty fast, right? There's not a ton of one drops, but the majority of drops are within our, our two CMC spot. So the deck's fully operational on three land. If we get to four lands, we're either double dropping spells or we're playing, you know, our game finisher, which in this case is Rankle, just flying and haste, a little bit of extra damage, which is quite nice because we do a lot of damage throughout the process while we're getting to four mana. So if we can, you know, land a hit with Rankle, use the ability, it's dealing four damage. Uh, that's gonna really help us close out most games. As far as, you know, the actual deck list goes, we built this deck revolving around Skemfar Avenger. This was the first card that we added. It's a 3-1 Elf Berserker. The 3-1 is really nice. It signifies that it is at home within an aggro deck. It's a blade creature. Whenever another non-token Elf or Berserker you control dies, you draw a card and lose one life. So not only does it have you know massive damage output capabilities, but it will also help us draw cards which is really nice. Typically, Mono Black Aggro doesn't care about their health points. We want to be using those as a resource along that journey to destruction. <laughs> so with this being said, uh, we notify ourselves that we have to build an Elf and Berserker based deck because this is the card we want to build around, right? So we search Elves and Berserkers and we get a lot of them, or I should say enough of them. The first up and 
maybe one of the best cards in the deck, surprisingly, is the Dusk Wielder. A 1 CMC, 1 power, 2 toughness that has boast for 1. Target opponent loses 1 life and you gain 1 life. That really makes it a 2-2, two -two, basically, uh, if it's dealing direct damage and, you know, giving us a form of life gain as well. So the boast is actually really neat. It's a good way to spend your extra mana that you may have throughout your turns. And it's also an amazing blocker, right? Like it, this stops a fervent champion that enters play with haste. Just basically stopping a red deck for their first turn is neat. And then, you know, later on, we're utilizing it uh, as well with something like our Demonic Embrace. This is an uh, enchantment for three mana. When it enters play, the equipped creature gets plus three, plus one, has flying, and is a demon. And of course, whenever the enchanted creature, um, sorry, it's an enchanted creature, not an equipped creature. And then we can also cast Embrace from our graveyard by paying three life and discarding a card in addition to its other cost. That makes the Dusk Wielder, you know, a 4-2, which is pretty cool. That can also boast for that one mana, potentially dealing five damage right that's not that bad and the demonic embrace fits with many of the other cards in our deck as well but for now let's continue to break down some of the elves and berserkers in the deck three copies of our blood sky berserker a two cmc one one whenever you cast your second spell each turn put two plus one plus one counters on blood sky berserker it gains menace until the end of turn absolutely amazing you know it basically immediately becomes a three three then a five five and that's going to deal plenty of damage because it's gaining evasion through menace. And you can also maybe potentially later on, like forementioned, put the demonic embrace on it as well to deal a bunch of damage. We have Elder Fang Disciple. This is a 1-1. When it enters the battlefield, each opponent discards a card. This is just general value, right? Because you can get it in play. You have the Avenger, which means when it dies you'll get to draw a card so it's replacing itself plus you could potentially trade with it uh with one of your opponent's creatures which is quite nice and they've had to discard so you do gain a decent amount of value through the elder fang disciple even more so if we're comboing that with something like Arya, first of lockthwain a three converted mana cost two three whenever Arya or another black creature you control enters the battlefield under your control each opponent loses one life and you gain one life that's just great with the whole deck, just general synergy. It's also an elf, which is good with the Avenger. Plus, we can tap it to sacrifice another black creature, drawing a card. So, you know, we could play the Disciple, have them discard, sacrifice it, lose one life, and draw two cards, which is very, very good. And, of course, we could chump block with it as well. We could tap Arya after Elder Fang has been declared as a blocker on one or our, one of our opponent's creatures before combat damage goes through we sacrifice it as long as it didn't have trample we just interrupted that damage which is really nice and you know picked up two cards within that journey potentially so I like the disciple it's got good value moving on Arya is our last elf in the deck so we've got the wielder we have the avenger we have the disciple we have the berserker and we have Arya that will be five elves slash berserkers in the deck to utilize uh, the draw ability from the Avenger, which is cr really quite nice. Filling out the mono black deck, of course, we have to have four copies of the Skyclave Shade. This is a 3-1, another offensive based creature. It cannot black. <laughs> it cannot black. It cannot block. And it has landfall. Whenever a land enters the battlefield, if it's in our grave, we can replay it from our graveyard, which is really quite nice. Kicker for three. And if it was kicked, it will enter with two plus one plus one counters on it. Um, and again, that will be five mana total if you do kick it, which is relatively decent late game if you're just replaying it from your grave. This is great against the mill meta because now you just have lots of cards to play um, whenever you play a land, right? We also have four copies of our Black Lance Paragon. This is a knight, so it's not a berserker or a uh, elf, but it's a 3-1 with flash. The 3-1 is a blade, great for aggro decks. The flash is amazing because we can basically avoid removal with it. And better yet, we can be the removal because when it enters the battlefield, target knight gains death touch and lifelink until the end of turn, which can be itself. So it can kill anything that it touches and it can gain us a little bit of life along that journey as well. Two copies of Elspeth's Nightmare, our first removal-based spell. When it enters play for three mana, destroy target creature and opponent controls with converted mana, uh, sorry, with power two or less. 
Next up, opponent reveals their hand. We choose a non-creature, non-land from it. They discard that card. And finally, exiling their graveyard. Just general match control here and a little bit more removal within our Blood Chief's Thirst. This is a one converted mana cost, destroy creature or planeswalker with two or less mana uh, conversion. And then if it was kicked, you know, destroy that creature or planeswalker regardless of the mana. Moving on to our last card in the deck, three co copies of Rankle Master of Pranks. This is a 3-3 three, three with Flying and Haste. Whenever it deals combat damage to a player, choose any number, discard a card, lose one life, draw a card, sacrifice a creature, right, for each player. Um, that's really nice. There's a lot of value here. The 3-3 three, three with Flying and Haste is worth it in any black aggro deck, in my opinion, regardless. Uh, and then all of the extra abilities are really, really quite nice. Again, we have the sacrifice effect that we can use to trigger the draw from the Skemfar, um, which could be really nice, of course. So that's the deck list. 18 lands, 3 Lockthwains, in which we can tap for 4, drawing a card, losing life, equal to the number of cards in our hand. Our main objective is to play as many creatures as we can and attack, right? Whether it be going wide, whether it be using our evasion through menace, through flying, or whether it be, you know, just through balancing our removal on our opponents, right? The Blood Chief's Thirst, the Nightmare, the Paragon, even Rankle uh, can help us remove. So keep your attack lanes open, play as many Elves and Berserkers as you can, you know, gain card advantage through the Shade, through the draw of the Avenger and Lockthwain, um, you know, do as much chip damage as you can and then attack with um, your menace and flying, right? Your evasion. So chip damage off the start, removal to get more damage through, and then eventually evasion to close out the matches. I hope that makes sense for you guys, kind of like the three phases of your aggro matchup. Because, you know, your opponent should be playing slow. You should get some hits in right away, whether it be Dusk Wielder, um, you know, in with an Avenger hitting for five on turn two or turn three. Um, and then you get, you know, something else in as well. So that's going to, you know, maybe deal six damage out of the gate. Then they start playing things. You remove them. You maybe get another five damage in, six damage, four damage, whatever it is. You've done now potentially 10 damage, 10 to 12 damage. And, you know, now Rankle's in play, deals another four. Now you've got Demonic Embrace in play, deals potentially another six. That's going to be the remaining of that damage, right? So easy peasy, lemon squeezy. I hope that kind of helps ease your mind as to the phases of the aggro match it says there's no ember cleave it's not like oh i played ember cleave i just did a ton of damage it's like well you do early damage then you balance removal do mid game damage and then you use flying uh to close out the matches and of course we do have the chip damage through our entrance of black creatures to pl in into play as well um, and we can basically cycle the shades which is quite fun if we're discarding cards you know we discard the embrace we discard the shade um, because we can replay them from the grave easy stuff like that demonic berserkers is a fun deck to play if you are a mono black junkie looking for quick easy wins in mythic or climbing your way up to mythic we had a successful win rate with it the land is really well balanced as is the deck you should um you know be quite successful with this deck i believe so let me know what you think of it in the comments below we're going to break down today's gameplay footage but before we do we need some call to actions don't forget to download Magic the Gathering Arena Assistant available for free to everybody on Windows. Whether it be your metagame analysis, breaking down all of the top decks, your own deck statistics, viewing your own collection information, how far are you in collecting all the cards, or my personal favorite, the Deck Advisor, which actually analyzes your whole collection and will recommend decks for you to play based on the best decks in Arena. So you don't have to spend wild cards. You see how it sorts it? I need wild cards for Bant Flying, but I don't need wild cards for all of these decks. And I've got a full collection as well. Um, so it's hard to see, but if we can scroll up, there we go. Lots of decks I don't need the wild cards for, which is pretty cool, right? Um, so if you're looking for free to play decks, this is a good place to check. And of course, I've got a free to play playlist as well. Download the assistant for free to everybody on Windows. Every link you'll need within the video is in my link tree link. Just Google Hello Good Game link tree or it's right in the description below. Of course, we have free cash prize tournaments every month on MTG Melee, Brawl and Artisan. We also have 100 one on one coaching sessions with myself, a 500,000 gem giveaway. Lots of um, value for you guys to receive for being part of the community 
We're also, like I mentioned at the start of this video, giving away a $10 gift card every single video if we can get 100 likes to the Wolf Gang. Shout out to you guys. Thank you so much for your support. And we also are now selling Magic the Gathering Arena codes through Grey Viking Games. People have been loving that. You guys have spent so much money on codes. I didn't think that was humanly possible, but I actually get a little bit of a kickback through that as well, 15%. So keep on spending. I appreciate it. <laughs> and, um, you know, we've got our Amazon link. You can buy everything else your day to day through as well. We get 3% from that. Twitch, Patreon, YouTube members gain access to exclusive content and a VIP chat as well, which is pretty decent. And yeah, that's all the ways that you can support me to help support the community. Thank you guys so much for your time and attention. Enjoy the gameplay footage and we'll be back in a few minutes to wrap up. Would you look at this land? I've had some of the best land pulls today that I've ever had. And I'm only running 20 lands in these decks today. So that's good. <laughs> right? Typically, I can't ever find land. Now we're finding too much land. Force of Discard. Tempo never really wants to lose cards out of their hand. And Uganos. Gulp. Let's take our damage. Simic. Mana ramp. Interesting. Let's kill the spirit. Everybody goes over. It's only two damage. Maybe we just keep these swamps to discard later. I don't know. An avalanche caller. Gross. Let's see their hand. Ooh, blizzard brawl. That is a good get right now. A decent hit right we do hit for five we gain one life did they have that land no but they get the ramp that's okay right they've got not enough mana and we 100% trade with the spirit I mean, I would have liked to draw off it, but still, to take it now is better, I guess. Boast for the one damage, one life gain. Then we hit for four. Let's play the swamps out of our hand because we want to lock Thwain. So they get their fourth land. I guess the spirit of Alder Guard comes out. Ooh, that's a big body. 6 4. As long as we can dodge the Blizzard Brawl or, you know, that big bear chomp, we should be okay, hopefully, right? That's the plan, man. Forest is a go. No attacks. We hit for five. Looking for two more damage. I mean, they could hit. It's irrelevant, though. Right? We have 20 life. We won't block. I still think we killed a caller. It has just more general value.
we hit with our boast again. Which is actually, like, pretty good. This one drop has put in a lot of work for us here. I mean, only one card to really play. I think that's just a good game. They grab the caller back. That's actually a pretty nice cycle, right? Bears an 8 4. And that is a good game. Dusk Wielder. All right. I could get behind this. Two land. Not bad. I think we play with our shade first, dodge some removal. Well, more like walk into the removal, but still being able to replay it later. Gaining a little bit of virtual card advantage. Let's see, though. Ooh. I'm sure we'll see the removal here. And if we just curve into Rankle, I mean, that's not bad. Oh, Toski. Toski is good. Hit for six. Do they have removal? That's a lot of black, right? I, I know they have it, so... Let's just cry a little bit here. <laughs> it's fine, though. They get to double draw, too. That indestructible is quite nice. We could have them sack it with Rankle, but we have to take care of their other creatures as well. Oh, really? <laughs> They beat us to it. So, that's like a game. We're not coming back from that. I'm surprised Rankle didn't take a draw too. They're like, no, no, that's too many cards. I'm sure there's another in hand, right? And that's the scary thing, is they have so many cards in hand because of Toski. Toski's stupid good. You just have to have Exile. We block Toski, get hit for four. Syrup as well. Interesting. And then a Soul Shatter. Nice. <laughs> Good game. Wolf. We go first. We have a decent curve with some removal. Hola. Everything seems up to code here. Yep. Let's duel. <laughs> oh, gosh. 
There we go. They're playing slow, which is always a treat for us. Hopefully no creatures again. Even if there is, it's not the worst, I guess. We can boast instead. Removal on the shade. So that's an incorrect play. I don't know, though. Not always the best at these things. Because we get to replay it, right? So that's virtual card advantage. And the Dusk Wielder, that boast ability is good, I'm telling you. I like it. If three lands, calls the dead, they get a zombie, which we can fry. Actually, let's have the discard and boast go out. They could have more removal, and we need to avoid that. A decent uh, chunk there. Their mill is really good. If they drop a red source, we're kind of screwed. I mean, not... Yeah, no, we... Yeah. <laughs> so we should probably drop the embrace and replay it later oh they don't go for it well, that is awkward They definitely need removal. Right? We have 22 life. They gained life. They're up now to 7, which is unfortunate for us, but... We could even just attack with the wielder and boast... Well, it's still alive before blockers are declared and combat damage goes out. Never mind! <laughs> That's gonna be... Oh, they gain more life here too. Of course they do. Up to nine. Ridiculous. Just holding on. We still hit for five. Not the worst. Down to four. Let's see how many life they gain here. <laughs> right? The Racto sacrifice decks are nasty. Oh, Rankle? That doesn't kill us, though. Right, we can sacrifice our disciple. I'm okay with all of this. The rankle blocks the wielder, as far as they know, but we can just, like, remove it with a multitude of... Options, no blocks here, doesn't matter. We take the damage. Beating some of the best decks. I love it. Absolutely love it. XO, XO. Hit for four. 
Nice. This Dusk Wielder has taken us home to victory twice. Now, I just want to point that out. All right, you guys, what happened to the Shuffler? I'm running so few land, and we're drawing two to three every time. All day. It's a good day on land. The other day was awkward, but I'm running a Dream Trawler on my card. Um, or my deck box, and this is the Giga Brain thought that it actually will adjust your land, <laughs> manipulate the uh, the algorithm. <laughs> Let's end our turn here. We'll keep our mana up for a Paragon. Just having fun with it. They're playing Jund, which is super duper frightening. They're fully tapped here. They can play another land though. It could be a swamp into a blood chief. It's a red source. Paragon in play. I really think we should just fry this thing, shouldn't we? And then just we attack and boast. I might regret that, but I still think that's our best option. Heading for five here. Getting one life. It's not that bad. If lots of land, an Elder Gargroth, oh my gosh. We top deck like a champion though. Getting that land. Getting that land. Hitting for only four this time, down to ten. Woo! 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 -hoo. We hit for a potential of six, seven, eight next turn. Let's see how this pays out. Do they have a three drop? Yes. We hit for six. Down to four. We have two damage confirmed next turn just with the wielders. Binding takes out Embrace. Or the Paragon, I wonder. Takes out the Paragon. I mean, we could replay Embrace regardless and um, get in the win. Mono Black Aggro is tearing it up. Interesting. And it's all because of that Dusk Wielder. Is that like the new tech? Dusk Wheeler OP? <laughs> Our opponent goes first and look at the land again, right? Yorion scares us, though. <laughs> oh, oh, Yorion, Yorion, Yorion. We don't have our one drop either. Let's just force the discard. We know they have removal, so. We don't want to sack the Embrace too quickly. We might just want to get right into their hand with the Nightmare instead. Yorion, Yorion, Yorion. Why you do this? It's a blade, right? It's a 3-1. It puts out a lot of damage. I think we just go right in with our Nightmare. That way we can get into their hands. Draw land, play Rankle. They don't have any bounceable permanents yet. They foretell. So they're protecting from our discard. Okay, so let's play a Disciple. Push the discard immediately. They 
could bounce something to our hand for one. Potentially, that's what it could be. We hit for three, end our turn. I mean, still really trying to get that rank out. We have removal if needed. But I think it's going to be really awkward. We'll be kicking Blood Chief's Thirst on Yorion. An event. Oh my god. They're both evens. Cry. Let's get in their hand. Moment of the sea in play. Gross. I hope you get an amazing draw that you can't play that we can discard. <laughs> Two to the bottom. But hold the multi. They should be drawing that later though. Playing a land. Two cards in hand. Yorion in hand. Shadow's Verdict is useless. Well, not super useless. I mean, it's good at against us, actually, but... So we need that land, is the thing. Oh, <laughs> uh, let's get an Avenger out. End our turn. We need a fourth land off the top so we can kick it on Yorion. We could even Rankle, attack. Actually, that's only if it deals... Combat damage, yeah, so they have a blocker that doesn't work. They get a scry to draw. Plus, they might even have a poison the cup. You know, like instant speed removal for two scry two. I doubt it, but it could be. Who knows? Something awkward here for sure. Okay. Graveyard goes, which is, you know, pretty much irrelevant. Let's try our best. It goes through. We hit for three. Feels good. Okay. Not all bad, but still could be pretty awkward seeing as they have seven lads. And binding hits our Avenger. We have Rankle. Wielder in play. Hey, it's my favorite card, right? And everybody thinks it's like, oh, look at that card. It's not good. That's a common. <laughs> no, 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 no. All right, they sack because they know their Yorion's gone, which is great. That means there's probably not more main deck. Scry 2 to the top is terrible news for us, though. It means they're both great cards. Uh, they only get one of them, and now here comes a draw and shuffle, so that second one goes wherever. But they still got that top one. <sighs> Alright, Emergent Ultimatum is super duper broken. So we have Kyora the Sea God... Probably like an Elder Gargaroth. Oh, they do have Valky. Yeah, that's the combo. Warren clicks Valky, Kyora. I didn't think they'd have Valky though. And the fact that they're able to choose Tybalt off of the Valky here is ridiculous as well. Just stupid. It's impossible to beat. Right? Like, the fact that they're able to cast Valky, or Tybalt off the back of Valky through the ult, like, same as Elspeth Conqueror's death. Typically, you don't have access to those backsides. You can't see them, but it just, like, somehow doesn't matter. I don't know. What chooses between being able to access the backside of an MDMC, MDFC and not? I think it's just whatever they decide, I guess, at this point. It literally feels like the most awkward thing.
Big gulp. I like the Dusk Wielder. We're tapping anyways, so nothing else matters. <laughs> we're not going to be able to hit Tib Alt because we're tapped out. Even though we dealt with the 8-8, right? They've got access to now what feels to be our whole library. <laughs> Tib Alt OP. I can deal with the Sea God, not the worst thing in my life. But Tib Alt OP. Bloosh. Nightmare kills the wielder. I guess we should have kept the uh, Black Lats after all. Getting beat up with our own cards feels pretty good. Yeah. Come on, bro. Play some more of those cards. They're just like memeing on us at this point. 10 life. We don't untap. They steal our permanent. Heartless Axe. We could kill ourselves. Can't kill this Tybalt though, and it just minuses. And that's what wins the game. GG's. Let's get uh, one more under our belt before we call it quits. Our opponent plays first. Our hand actually looks really nice. Mono Red's the worst though. At least we have a blocker for it. But, again, mono red's the worst. Robber of the rich. Okay, that sucks. And they get a perfect card for it. Gulp. Skim far in play. No attacks. We still need to defend. Four cards in hand. They hit with both. Because we can't give them the Demonic Embrace, we have to double block. There's no cleave, but there's lots of other stuff they could use. Get the draw. They have another robber. Wow. Luckily, we can block that now because we have our own Berserker with a wielder on top. Berserker goes to 3 3. Not that bad. We also have Black Lance, which is cool. Let's see if they have spot removal. And hopefully, we pick up another land. I'm sure there's an Ember Cleave here. No? Good game, ladies and gentlemen. All right, that wasn't enough. We need another. That's not enough. It doesn't quench my thirst for mono black aggro. Going first. Hand's not great. Certainly isn't bad, though. Can we find our third land to key out? Obviously, we miss our one drop, which sucks, but it's not the end of the world. Gross. What a great way to end our video. Playing against rogues. Should we just draw their removal for our whole life? Right, the shade can maybe win us the match here if they just like throw all their removal at it. I hope. It's better than just like losing our stuff. Are you crabbing me? I'm, I thought it was a Fable Passage for sure. Two crabs, then Passage. Turn two, OP. We done goofed up, kids. I didn't realize there's two shades in the grave already. Let's just, like, shade out. Let's shade all over the place. Let's shade on him. <laughs> Throw in shade, baby! 
there's no way they lose a crab. They're just going to take massive amounts of damage. We don't have eight in grave yet. That's seven. They get close. They want to kill our stuff with death touch. Maybe we just leave the crabs alone. Ignore the crabs. Oh, 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 oh my god. Crab, crab, enforcer, thought thief. Get out of town, Billy. I'll take trades. Throw the enforcer in my face. Throw a uh, thief in my face. Hey, crabs as well, I'll take. Or the damage, I'll also take. The plot thickens. I hope you brick, rogue player. We have removal, we have discard, which is irrelevant. <laughs> <laughs> what happened to all your land, Mr. Rook? And even then, like, why quit? They just are, like, wiling out on us. Crap, crap, Enforcer Thought Thief somehow isn't good enough for them. Okay, I mean, win's a win's a win. I'll take it. Maya will take it. <laughs> all righty. So... The deck works. I think there's something to this box art. You know, that's a conspiracy and a half. But I have done it on two decks so far, and it's worked both times. So I don't know what I'm really saying about that. Um, confuse the algorithm. Don't let it direct you how it sees fit. Stand on your own. Just meme on the game, right? Drop lands, never run 24, and then put a dream trawler on your cover, and things will work. <laughs> things will be better. This is the hack, you guys. These are the cheat codes. 20 to 22 lands, dream trawler on your box art. You'll get 2 to 3 in hand every turn. You'll curve into 4 perfectly, and you can play your aggro decks finally at peace. <laughs> <laughs> without breaking or flooding every other game thank you all for your time and attention you're amazing hanging out with me every day liking the videos winning a ten dollar gift card twice a day actually because two videos a day 6 a.m 6 p.m and you know show up live like the video comment and then someone is going to get that card every video twice a day you know, we have the Arena Assistant to download for free if you're on Windows. You get all the best information for the game. You'll see it here. I'll just quickly, quick, quick through it. <laughs> and of course, we're doing the codes. We have the Amazon link, the memberships on Twitch, Patreon, YouTube that gain exclusive content and VIP chat access, which is pretty cool. Direct um, chats with myself. Lots of other stuff going on. Check it out. Check out some of the uh, the perks and rewards, of course. And yeah, just thank you for your support. As always, you guys, I feel like a broken record always saying this, but you know, it's never going to end. So this was Mono Black Aggro. I hope you enjoyed. How would you change the deck? What would you improve about it? Leave it your opinions in the comments below. Of course, I read every th single thing and I'll reply to what I can. Of course, we'll see you also in just a few seconds within our next video. Take care and enjoy.